Okay, so I got one of my trusty cut up uh, oil uh, containers here that I'm gonna go ahead and take number one and stuff that one down in there. Now I'm gonna fill it up until it goes over the top of the piston. I like to use the weight of oil that you're gonna run in it and uh, you usually will run 5W20 on the modulars. Now the reason why that I do this is I like, I wanna get the oil down around the rings and uh, I'll just kinda of stir it around in there, move the rings back and forth. Uh, that's getting oil up into the wrist pin. Um, uh, some people like to let their rings soak in oil, but uh, this is the way I do it. And while I have it in there, go ahead and take the cap off. And with the cap off, you can go ahead and put some assembly lube down here. Now on the bottom side, uh, it's good a good chance to go through and do one last wipe down of your uh, journals. And when you're done wiping them down, I like to put uh, the journal that I'm going to be working on. So this front one here, we're going to be uh, we're going to put in one and five, and snug those down. We'll work our way back. So we'll leave this one. Uh, in this position which is uh, down back with our piston now and slowly raise this thing up out of here it's gonna be messy so put some rags down dump any of the oil out and now we're gonna orient the um, the arrow so that it's pointing forward just like our block is and now is the last time you can go through and double check make sure that all your ring gaps are where they're supposed to be so our oil ring gaps, is the bottom one's here, the top one's there. Our second compression ring is right here. You take a look and make sure that the uh, part number is up. Same with our top compression ring, the part number is up and the gap is over here. And then lastly, the uh, expander ring has uh, where it's butted up against itself. And it can be hard to find so there it is right here on this one uh, it's in this area right here uh, one thing that I've had happen before luckily I caught it before I put it in there was that was like over the top of itself so uh, really make sure and it's hard to see it uh, but uh, you really want to make sure that that uh, is where it's supposed to be and not uh, not sticking out or anything like that so if everything is good I use one of these uh, this, these work great. This is actually by ARP. They have adjustable ones so that you don't have to buy one, uh, for every size that you do. This one I've had since, I, I don't think they had the adjustable ones, uh, when I bought this thing. So these are great. They're like 50 bucks or so. And, uh, I slowly, I put it down in there and I want to make sure that it, the rings kind of compress in there a little bit. So I'll move it up and down get some oil going on there. So it slides pretty good. And when you put this in, you want to make sure that uh, the bottom of the tool sits on, on the engine block. Okay, we're going to put this in there now. And, uh, there may be, you want to watch out for a counterweight in there. Uh, it may not want to go all the way down, so make sure that your rod is uh, in this, this direction here. And you slide it down, get your skirt started. And then you should be able to just slide it down in there. I like to do it. Kind of like uh well, there i'm hitting I feel like i'm hitting okay i like to do it just kind of like a quick burst down and it should slide itself all the way in there and now from the bottom side uh here's a journal that we we're going to go to and here's our rod so i'm going to guide it guide the rod and push down the top of the piston slowly guide it onto the journal once i got it on there we can rotate the engine back around now take our main cap, put some assembly oil on there. And remember one side of this is marked with a part number and one side is marked but with our Sharpie. And so we're gonna make sure and line that up on the rods. Our Sharpie mark is over here. And just set that there. And now our rod bolts, I already put some lube on here, some ARP lube. We put that on just the threads and underneath the head of the bolt. Now I run these down by hand until they, basically just until they touch. And I'm gonna to ratchet them on there quarter turns at a time. 
to slowly bring it down. And once it's snug, you should have some movement back and forth. If you don't, you have a problem. And we'll rotate it back around so we can do number five. Now we got one and five in there, and one thing you want to make sure is that you got some movement back and forth on both of these. Uh, there is a there is a specification. I think it's two thousandths in between here, but as long as you can move it back and forth, uh, you, you'll be okay. It's if you didn't have if you didn't get your ring if you didn't get your bearings in there correctly, you probably would have binding already. Now I'll continue that process uh, and get all the other ones in there, and then I'll go over how we torque them. Okay, so now everything's in there. You can see uh, one through four. Like I was telling you, the markings are on the outside. The Sharpie markings are on the outside, and they're matching. And then uh, five through eight is going to be the opposite. So uh, once you got everything uh, snugged down, you want to make sure that you can turn it, rotate the engine around. All right, so if you don't have the crank turning tool, uh, you can use a, an adjustable. You just put it on the end. And I snug it down until it hits the uh, uh, Woodruff key and you should be able to turn it over uh, pretty pretty low effort like not a whole lot of effort you can see it rotates around one of the critical steps in putting together an engine is making sure that your rod bolts are torqued correctly uh, and there's a it's kind of confusing uh, and I'm going to try to explain it as best I can. Uh, it's confusing because there's uh, different recommendations on torque for these. For instance, we have the two uh, instructions from Manly. And if you look at them, the ARP 38s, ARP 2000, uh, 38s, ARP 2000, uh, on this set of directions says 43 foot pounds. On this set of direction, it says. Uh, 60 to 65 foot pounds but I looked on uh, ARP's website and what they recommend is 55 foot pounds and a bolt stretch of 0.5 uh, five and a half thousandths to six thousandths and to check your bolt stretch you would use one of these tools this is a bolt stretch gauge if you take a look at the rod bolts, there's an indent on the top side and on, on the back side of them. And what those indents are for is for these sharp portions on your on the uh, bolt stretch gauge to go into. So we'll put that on. And there is a little bit of play in here. I try to look for the smallest portion and then zero it out. Okay, so there's our zero. And so what I'll do is I'll walk these up in, in uh, stages. So I'll go, I usually go to about 60 foot pounds and that gets me the stretch I want on them. Uh, so I'm gonna go 20 uh, on this one, then 20 on that one, then uh, 40 on this one, then 40 on this one, then 60 and then 60. It's 20. And now 40. And finally 60. Now we can put our bolt stretch gauge back on. And it's right at five thousandths, which is a little low. So if it's low, what we do is break this off and then go up to like 63 foot pounds. Okay, so now they're loose. I'll just double check. Still got a good zero. I'm going to do the same sequence. This time I'm going to go up to 65. And now we're right under six thousandths. And that is good. So we'll go ahead and uh, torque the rest of them to 65. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to snug them down. 20. 
40. And finally 65. And now what I like to do, since I've done one and five and they're on the same journal, one, make sure you still got that play where it slides back and forth and then rotate the crank around. Make sure that you can still uh, move it around and we'll put these guys uh, up in the top so we can torque them and work our way back. If there was something wrong with the uh, fillet area and the ring or the uh, bearings not uh, button upright you would at this point you wouldn't be able to turn the engine over it'd be very difficult so it should be easy to move around so I'll just work my way back and now you can do all four of them I'm going to do all four of them at 20 all four of them at 40 and then all four of them at 65. There you have it. The short block is assembled. Next up, we'll put the uh, oil pump, oil pump on there, and the uh, oil pan, and uh, pull the car in. Start getting the heads off.